this is a, going on about to be exactly two months since I've been in the hospital since Christmas. Um, since my rehab, I've been in, in mm, since my rehab, since my car accident. I've been in my car accident since um, December 26th at like 8.57 in the morning. And this is going on about two months being in, in the hospital for it. Um, or technically, I'm in a rehab right now, trying to get better and heal. They gave me um, like an exit depart date, exit date, which is March 2nd. But due to one of my injuries, a um, wound that I have is got infected. So my actual expected day to leave is March 7th now. So it's just like two, two weeks away. I'm excited. So like stay tuned i must keep a recording throughout the journey and all that but see y'all later love you hi welcome back to my channel if you're new here hey 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 it's your girl dream and i'm back with another video we go into that. We go get into sorry, sorry, but um, so yeah, so basically, I home Sunday morning, um, December 26th. I want to say like 8 30 in the morning, but I didn't show up to the hospital until like 9 something in the morning, like early, early 9 in the morning. But um, my ex, he was driving the car and he claimed that somebody cut him off or cut him off short or his other story is somebody got behind him and hit him, which made him spin out of control. I'm going to get in more detail with that. Uh, no shade to him. Uh... And I, if you know who he is, cool, whatever. But I just don't believe that story. And I'm going to explain in more details in another video. But I just don't want this video to be too long. Just in case, somehow, some way, my story is just too short. Or I don't have enough storage and I can't edit it. Like, I'm trying to put content out for you guys. So, I'm trying to make my videos kind of short right now. And so, I, I can figure out how to work this dang storage thing on my phone. Or it's like a laptop. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tell you more in detail about that. It's just I don't trust it. But um long story short, uh he drove into a bridge wall and which caused mad damage to me. As you could tell, I got one scar right here on my neck. This is um I guess informed me to breathe while I was in my coma slash time frame in the hospital. It was to help me breathe during the time, uh, which stopped me from being able to talk. I don't know, like, the whole body thing, but for you to have a hole right here, it's, uh, you know, like, them big time smokers that have a hole here and they got to put, like, a machine in order to talk? So basically, yeah, it stops you from talking, like any um, sound waves coming out of your mouth. Um, also, I couldn't eat nothing. Um, couldn't really drink too much either. I had a uh, tube feeding in my stomach. So yeah, that's what this was. And it's crazy um, because you know your body naturally builds a lot of phlegm during the day and i never noticed it because like we don't spit out phlegm we don't do none of that I, I guess your body like figures its way out to get rid of it but when i had this hole in my neck like this hole in my neck but i had that little thing i don't want to explain it like i'm sorry y'all but it was like this little tube thing in my neck i was building a lot of phlegm like and that phlegm was like stopping me from breathing I had to constantly call a nurse to clog it out, unclog it, like suck it out. So annoying. Um, so I have that. I had broke this side of my jaw and then I had shattered this one in like multiple pieces. 
so the inside of my mouth they had to uh fix it and stitch me up uh it was bad to the point when i had woke up from my coma which is january the 7th i woke up but i have no memory of what the heck was going on until like january 12th january the 17th ish but around those days um is when i started knowing what was going on with me what happened to me and what was going on around me so i was kind of out for a while uh so from 2021 all the way up into 2023 in, in january so a couple of weeks i was out um yeah so i, I uh when i had woke up my jaw was fine when i woke up it didn't really bother me i didn't even know i broke it um it's just the fact that i couldn't open my mouth that wide like <laughs> this is how wide I could open it it's crazy um it took a lot of uh, jaw stretches to open my mouth uh also too as I'm telling you this story I'm going to pop up pictures based on what part of my body I'm talking about um some pictures might not be posted only because it might be too explicit to post on social media but you could definitely follow me on Instagram, uh, Dream A Lot I will put it somewhere on the screen. Uh, D R E A M M U L A T T O. That's my main page. My backup page is the same thing, just underscore at the end. Um, but on my main page, I have it posted of what it, certain parts of my body look like that I might not post on here, just so I don't cause a red flag or anything like that. So yeah, you go follow me there and you'll see it. Uh, so yeah, I told you about my jaw, uh, my arm. This is the arm I had broke. I broke it, in, I think it was three different places on the upper arm and I had to get stitches for it in a metal bracket. The metal bracket is like right here on my elbow, which sucks because like, I don't know if y'all know, but you don't have much skin in your elbow. So like when I bend it, or when I bend it, you could see the. I don't know if you could like you could see it now, but yeah, yeah you can. Um, the metal bracket sticks out my arm, and it sucks because when I like I bump into something, oh, it's your funny bone it makes you laugh. No, this one hurts. Like I don't have no bruises or like no scrape skin crepe or like in the beginning like this little metal piece would scrape my skin like you would see little scabs of like dried up blood and stuff but you can see the little stitches that i have right here well they healed obviously um and then i had broke my l3 i want to say that is your lower back the, your lower part of your spine um i have broke that and I'll show a picture of it somewhere over here. Uh, and sorry, my mind is like going crazy with the story. Like, what's next? What's next? So I'll be forgetting. But anyway, sorry. Um, since I have broke my spine, and we all know that you got mad nerves in your spine um, that's connected all over your body, I believe that a nerve got damaged in the process um because my hand nerve is out of whack and i did some research and the nerve that i messed up is called my median nerve because i don't feel like no nerve damage in my arm i feel it from like my wrist area to my fingertips and it's only my middle finger my index finger half my thumb and half my ring finger and it's like i could kind of feel it here yeah and i kind of feel it on this side of my palm not this side but the past month it's been getting extremely better and i think it's because i've been constantly moving my hand doing little uh hand exercises and plus work so it's not as intense as it used to be but like I couldn't ball my hand into a fist. I couldn't like do this or anything like that. Um, it hurt. Like it literally basically feels like um, 
when you have your foot fall asleep and you feel all those little pins and needles in your uh, foot and like if somebody hits it it feels like when you're trying to wake your foot up like not the first stage but like the stage just before it fully wakes up and it's like that ting and you just can't move like you feel like you just got a charlie horse type ting i don't know how to explain it but like that's the best i could explain it to y'all so yeah basically that's how this hand felt like it was super super sensitive it was so weird because like if you gradually touched my hand i wouldn't feel it but if like you really hit it that's when i would feel it like i would feel all the pins and needles and then on top of that i can't feel texture like i could feel stuff like oh i feel this in my hand but i couldn't feel like the, the little ridges in my shirt and then the smoothness right here like i don't know like, i couldn't feel texture it was i still can't feel texture let me be honest with you i still can't but it's not as bad like i could kind of feel it but yeah so i couldn't really hold too much in this hand because i didn't trust that it will stay in his hand like i might let go forgetting that i'm holding something or something like that so i put a lot of my strength or my dominance back onto my dominant hand like it was hard but this hand i'm trying to use more and more often but that's what happened with this hand i told you i broke my back uh oh and how i broke my back and damaged the front end of my stomach like my dom right in my stomach the abdominal area is so when he had hit the bridge wall you know when you slam on your brakes like your seatbelt like triggers and it, it it sharpens it like tightens not sharpen it tightens well i don't know if it's he slammed on the brakes or they're just the fact of the impact but my seatbelt basically tightened but it tightened so bad it sliced me in half on the inside of me like my interior got sliced in half like my skin is what held me down is what basically kind of saved me uh because i would have been two pieces instead of one my skin was the only thing that didn't get sliced like my everything on the abdominal wall that was by the seatbelt was sliced and it's that's like isn't that like i don't know that's like real crazy to me to hear that like a seatbelt you go touch your seatbelt in your car and you tell me how sharp that thing is it's not sharp like it's bendable it's very flexible it's some type of uh clothing material but just stronger in a sense like it is not that and it's crazy because it's all it was it was the force the impact what was that sliced me like the seatbelts oof child all right that's that's crazy to me so basically it sliced my intestines uh broke my back like sliced me there i have like screws in my spine to hold it up now um uh, messed up my muscle and my fat like the my part of my abdominal wall so I got stitches on the side of my stomach because they sliced that um yeah it was that seatbelt did a lot of damage but it did kind of save me in a sense like could have flew out the window and landed somewhere dead as a doorknob um so it did kind of save me but it did a lot of damage like oh my aorta busted but i don't know again i don't know full details because the doctors and the nurses when i was in the hospital didn't want to tell me everything at once which i'm grateful um because if they told me everything at once i probably would have like passed out like that's a lot so they told me bits and pieces so again i don't know exactly everything yet unfortunately i know it's like been a year down the road but I believe that my aorta busted in the process of my one of my surgeries because I don't think my aorta busted because of the seatbelt. I don't think so, but the way the story was explained, that's how I took it in the beginning. But if you think about it, you only got about two, three minutes of life left when you bust your aorta. Like, it, 
because that's like a main vein muscle, a vein. I said muscle, a main vein. That's like your lifeline right there. So you bust that, you're gone. So, or it could have busted through the seatbelt and I just had, you know, God with me. I mean, I already had him with me and I had angels protecting me and all that, but I don't really know. But um, with the seatbelt uh, slicing me in half, it did damage a lot. So I lost all my large intestines. I don't have any more large intestines left. Um, and I, like I told you earlier, the muscle was split in half. Uh, my spine damaged um, my nerves, my median nerve, I learned that, that's what it's called. And that's basically all that happened that I could think of now. Now that I'm telling y'all the story, like, well, just telling you the details of what happened to me, don't seem like a lot, but it definitely was a lot to go through. But uh, yeah, I had a... Um, it was a lot. Like, I couldn't walk. Yeah, when I woke <laughs> Sorry, I'm just reminiscing and trying to, like, tell you all at the same time. But I couldn't walk when I woke up. Uh, couldn't talk. Um, again, I was on... I was being too fed, so, like, I couldn't eat nothing. I had a very, very small appetite. Like, I'm not telling you small. I mean small, like, damn near newborn baby small. Like, four ounce me type shit small. Um, my heart rate would, like, go extremely fast if I, like, moved an inch. Like, that was crazy to me. Like, I felt normal. Like, I felt fine. I didn't feel like my heart was racing that fast. But, obviously, I'm in the hospital, so they had a heart rate monitor on me. And when they wanted me to just move a little bit more to get me moving and stuff but I couldn't do too much because my heart rate was like moving real fast all I would do is just get up go to the, the, the little seat couch thing that was next to my bed I could post a little video clip of it I can't post the whole thing because you know how I'd be at the hospital with that little little um, gown thing they give you the whole butt be out and stuff <laughs> so yeah I can't post the entire video but yeah <laughs> Um, oh, let me tell you, so I had my hip was cut from the SIBO, that part was cut, uh, but it wasn't no, like, I think real, real deep, but it, it was an open wound, it did just heal not that long ago, so yay, one wound down, you feel me, but, um, when that got cut and I had to go to rehab, they had put this uh, silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is basically hot metal. Uh, yeah, it's basically like hot metal, like liquid metal. And they put that on my wound to like flatten it, like cause the, the wound was getting like a little lumpy and they didn't want it to heal lumpy. So they was trying to like smooth it out so it could heal smooth. Um, also too it reactivates the wounds to like tell the body like look there's a wound here you need to heal it because if your body's trying to heal something for a long time i guess at a certain period it will forget that it's trying to heal something and don't really pay it no mind and you will have like an open wound for a longer time so they were trying to activate it to make it heal faster um it was cool it didn't hurt by putting it on is the fact that after a while, uh, like not after a while, but like a couple days later, that thing burns. And let me tell you, like, I don't know if you put silver nitrate on an open wound, on like a meteor, like meteor, like a fatter place on your body, well, it does the same type of pain level or the same type of damage, whatever. Same, will have the same effect that it had for me but it was on my hip. Mind you, I lost about 60 pounds. So I ain't, I don't have much meat on my body right now. And um, it was on my hip. So it's literally sitting on a hip bone. And every time I walk, I'm like flexing that wound. So it's trying to heal 
and then when I'm moving, I'm stretching it back open type stuff. So it hurt like really bad when I moved. Like if I sit still, it doesn't bother me. But if I decide to move from one position to another or walk, painful. Like I literally had to grab, sorry, the camera again. I literally had to grab my butt cheek and like push it to the to my hip and hold it there. Like it was still painful, but that alleviated a little bit of pain. Like it was so painful. And then I was paranoid about my back, like, cause I, I knew I broke it. Uh, it was healed, like within four to five months it was healed. But in my mind, I was like, it's not healed. Like it could easily snap again. I got screws back there. So then I got my hip issue and now I'm walking with a hunch, looking like a hunter no genome. Like I was going out crazy. Like now I'm all standing out straight, like, hey, kudos to me. I made a oh, milestone achievement on that. Uh, but that stand up straight did help a lot through PT. I did a lot of PT, physical therapy, um, a lot of exercise, a lot of stretching. That's what also helped with my hand. Um, and then my hip healed, so it was even better. I didn't have to deal with that pain no more. Um, what else? Oh, I had uh, an open wound in the back of my head. That was the other thing that I had. I don't know if that came from the car accident or that was just me laying on in one spot for mad long. But I had two open wounds actually. One healed a lot faster than the other. I had to cut my hair in order for uh, so I could clean it because I think would leak a lot. It was annoying. Um, and then when I came home, I really I had to chop all my hair off because. I didn't realize until I decided to take my braids out that I had that um, it leaked all in my hair and it matted the heck out of my hair. Like the root of my hair was matted. The ends of my hair wasn't. It was just the root. And I was trying so hard to get it out and I couldn't. Like it was worse than dreads, tight matted. Like my whole root was. I was like, you know what? So I just. Shave. I didn't shave it, I cut it out, but I was basically bald. Um, that was the worst feeling ever. Like, as a female, you do not want to be bald. Like, if you want short hair, cool, you styling it that way. But if you're so used to a certain length of hair and you cut it past that length, it's like you lost a limb or something. Like, you lost a part of you. Like, that was just such a sad time for me. I kept my bind on all the time because I was not playing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was that. Oh, also too, when I was, I'm sorry, I'm like jumping from scene to scene. I should have took notes. It would have been more chronological order because you know my mind be all over the place. I be here, there, there. But I hope y'all keeping up. And if y'all keeping up and y'all lasted this long. Y'all should put like an emoji. I was thinking of an emoji. Um, let's do the the double swirl around pink hearts. Put that emoji in the comments so I know you, you lasted this long with me, guys. And subscribe and share this video. Subscribe, subscribe, and share. Like, I'm telling you guys what happened to me. And then I want to like really get in detail because I really want to help people out with whatever y'all going through because that's kind of what I needed but it's all good I had myself I had I had a phone so I could do research you know it's all good but if you got some but if you got somebody like me that's going through something similar it's more of a personal but not personal touch like it makes you feel like you're not alone you know and we all need that. Like, we all humans. We all want to feel like we're not alone. We feel loved. We feel appreciated. So, and also, too, like, people who are going through what, what I'm going through or going through something similar or worse, whatever the case is, is you're a strong person. Like, you're a strong individual. You're an independent individual. You are strong because you're going through what you're going through because God knew you could handle what you're handling. Um... 
and but just because you're strong does not mean you can't get no love like strong people need love independent people need love we all need that support we all need to feel together so i hope to reach out to anybody somebody that's like my big goal of 2023 is to be able to reach out and touch some hearts and some souls so please share please subscribe please support the dream literally support me <laughs> but um you know yeah back to this, my uh my life of what happened to me um when i was in rehab i could not walk now i could walk i had a cane i had a wheelchair but it's the fact that they didn't really allow me to walk too much because they was wasn't sure of how safe that is to allow me to walk especially on my own so it was a lot of the times i was moving around through wheelchair or i would have like a nurse next to me with my cane and i'm telling you like being able to walk or having anything in life and then having it taken away from you is the worst feeling ever because you know what it's like to have and you also know what it's like to not have but you're so used to having you just realize why you, when you don't have it now that you really didn't appreciate the things you did have like i don't know if that really made any sense but i'm trying to make it make sense so um you was born with all your body parts versus a person that wasn't born with all, um, all your body parts. The person that's born with not all your body parts can kind of hate life because they see people that are born with everything. and But they have a different mindset because they was never born with it. So they don't really know what it's like. But they, was, they were able to make it manage and work for them. Cool versus a person that was born with it and it got taken away for whatever the reason is now they gotta adjust and then they kind of living in in history like in the past like oh look at me like oh i was able to walk oh look at me i had a voice i was able to talk or whatever the case is i'm assuming that's like how it is like it sucks to have something and then having it taken away from you because now you're sitting there like, damn, I was being so, like, ungrateful. Like, I wasn't being grateful. Like, I had all these all these things that the next person might not have. And now I don't have it. I don't even know what to do. I don't know. That's just how I was. Like, waking up in a, in a hospital, not knowing what's going on, and you can't even talk. Like, I had to write everything or text it in order to communicate. Like... That was hard in itself, like, I don't know, like, I don't, I didn't like it. And then not being able to walk, like, that was, I think that was the worst part for me, was not being able to walk. Like, I was determined to learn how to walk again and do it by myself. Like, I don't know, I think I'm just really, really independent and I don't like to rely on nobody for nothing. Like, I hate it. I don't like giving somebody all the power over me or any type of power over me. Like, I don't want you to go around and be like, oh, I did this, this, and that for her. Or, oh, I did that. That's how she got that. Or, like, I don't know. I just I just don't like it. Like, I don't want nobody to have an up on me. Like, it just it doesn't work for me. So, being able to not walk was like something that was I was determined if I couldn't talk cool whatever I was about to text and sign language mouth it out hopefully you can understand the words I don't know I was gonna make that one work but walking I was determined so I'm gonna be posting a little video somewhere on the screen where you can um see I was at PT yes I had no shoes on so don't come for me but I was in I was in rehab, like that's where I was staying at for the month. But the room I was in it was for physical therapy and I had seen this boy walk in and he had this little cane and he was walking 
with the cane and then he decided to walk without it and I was like I was so motivated I was like well, let me try that I was like can I I told my um my physical therapist I was like can I try walking without my cane because he rolls me in in a wheelchair and then I do my little walk arounds with my cane and I was like can I try without the cane and I did it I was so excited I was like I was like oh my god because my doctor uh didn't think I was gonna ever walk again um told me I had no voice like the way stuff was ran down on me when I woke up from my coma to the point where I was leaving the hospital slash rehab which is like from January to March it was like straight up no hope like the damage that was done to me was like a miracle that I was even I'm sorry I'm about to cry guys this should be so emotional for me Whew. sorry it should still be emotional for me but the damage that was done to me was it was a shocker to them that I was even alive but it was so much that I didn't even think I was going to be able to walk or just have my regular life back but from my angels above and God above and everybody that was praying for me, thank you. Much love, much appreciation because I was determined. Like, I don't want to hear, no, you can't, 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 no, can't, not in my vocabulary. I'm going to make it happen. You feel me? Like, and I did. I made it happen. I'm walking. I'm talking, obviously. And still got a big old smile on my face and I'm still here pushing through and I know you guys can too for whatever you're going through but yeah this video is kind of long again guys I kind of went too far but that's basically the gist of what happened to me and uh, I'm still going through the process I'm still healing I'm not 100% healed yet I still go to the doctors I'm actually going to the doctors um in a couple of days I go to the doctors pretty frequently and so I don't really have too much to say uh just of what had happened and kind of like a little update of where I'm at now so I'm still healing uh, it still goes to the doctors frequently. Uh, it's been a year, um, but it's been a lot of great, amazing changes, positive changes. Uh, just got to keep pushing forward, always thinking positive, and never give up. So trust your creator's uh, timing, and it'll all work out. And again, sorry that I, I done teared up on y'all. This stuff be so emotional to me. Like, I try to smile it off, laugh it off. But it's all a mental, like, it's... Hey, guys, I'm back. My camera died, not died, but it got low storage again, y'all. And so I'm just gonna make this video quick. Sorry, I had to really figure out what I'm going to do with my storage because that's been a problem two years ago and it's still a problem now like i don't mind understanding so if y'all got suggestions ideas or whatever please comment down below like help a sister out but i really want to make content i want to make videos for you guys to watch and it's freaking hard when you don't have storage but let's piggyback on what i said in the last video is that mental was the strong the hardest thing mental was the hardest thing for me in my healing process it's still to this point a hard thing um i still cry to this day mentioning about my story um so you might catch me cry some more talking about my story um it's not affecting me as much as it seemed like because i'm crying i'm just a very emotional person and that was such a very hard traumatic time in my life and it's just something that you know is like really close to me in my heart like it affected me but not in like in a negative way too much in a negative way it was all positives like i see a lot of positives in it but i'm just saying like you guys catch me cry here and there don't mind me 
it's embarrassing it's enough that I'm crying on camera but it's the real deal holy failed of me and that's what I want to give out I want to give uh the real and I want to show you guys like what it's like to go through what I'm going through and so you guys know that you're not alone and all that extra stuff so thank you for tuning in um stay tuned for the next episode episode the next video i am posting every wednesday and every friday at 6 p.m yes this video is not going to be posted on wednesday unfortunately again with my whole storage so be mindful that if i miss a day that's because i i work overnight and my storage sucks but be patient with me i am trying my hardest to be on point on time with my videos so this <laughs> But all right, stay tuned for the next one. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You like, you comment, your uh, comments about this video and about my whole journey of this whole car accident thing. And share it to anyone that you know that is in need of a little uplifting in their life. And now I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't obviously I clearly don't want to leave y'all yet but got a blast for the next video